it's an absolute honor and pleasure to um, host John Joe, legendary John Joe. Um, he had uh, leadership positions in many um, well, watch industry, famous watch guys, Hublot, um, Blancpain, a passing example, uh, Tag Heuer, Omega, to name a few. He's a watch lover, he's a watch maker, cheese maker, watch collector, and um, he has a lot to share. And what I personally learned out of reading, many professors around the world wrote many case studies about him, the way he managed different brands, and the way he launched different products. So, uh, on the next 45 minutes or less, um, he's going to take us to the journey. He's going to take us somewhere that we're going to see totally out of the box, where one plus one is not equal to two as our engineering mind. So on that note, this, please join me to welcome John Clayton. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. I, lo I used to live here. <laughs> I come from Lausanne, in fact. <clears throat> So to be back at the Rolex, no, we're not in the Rolex Learning Center, but um, it's great to be, to be back and to see you. And the more I get old, the more I have to learn. I never thought I would have to learn so much after my studies. I thought that after the studies, the learning process would be over. It was over for a few months, and then I realized that I have still to learn. And now that I'm 74, I don't have enough time in one day to learn all the things I need to learn. Because the world has changed in such a way that even my education and my philosophy has to be changed. And the change is in order to adapt and I, I, from time to time, I have a friend of mine or people I know that are dying, which is normal. When you are 74, you have friends that are 80, 82. And um, each time I go to the church, <clears throat> I'm amazed because I'm Catholic, <clears throat> how much the church has not adapted itself to the young generation. Because when I hear what they are telling us, I say, God damn, I understand that the church is half empty. Only old people are going there. The young people cannot follow because the language is wrong. Not wrong, but let's say not adapted. And this is probably the most beautiful in life is when you have the faculty to adapt. The adaptation is essential. And many people have the difficulty to adapt because they stay on what they believed, but what they believed <laughs> is changing. And the change is also, you can call it the evolution. And the evolution is probably one of the most beautiful things you can, uh, you can do in life. Because the older you get, the better <laughs> you get. Because the higher your brain is and your, <clears throat> and your spiritual approach, the higher and the closer you get to the sky. And I can come quite close because I have no hair. The hair is what is... <laughs> <laughs> That's why in the Buddhism, they have to shave their hair in order to be closer to the, to the sky <laughs> and to the influence <clears throat> of, uh, of the rayon, of the, what do you say in English, I don't know, of the rayon. <laughs> Nobody speaks French here, good. <laughs> the French language which I am born, <laughs> with the French language is the most frustrating language because it's useless. <laughs> Wherever you go, nobody speaks French. 
Now, even in France. <laughs> no, that was a, a bad joke, sorry. Uh, <laughs> a very bad joke, but it can become a good joke. Why? Because the provision of Boston Consultancy or somebody like that, they pretend that in 2050, French will be one of the most uh, spoken language in the world. And when I saw that, I said, this is impossible. Because I thought it's impossible, I started to read. <laughs> and while reading, I suddenly understood French is becoming extremely popular thanks to Africa. And when you, believe, when you think how many countries and how many people in Africa are speaking French, you don't have to look at French just for the French nation, but French as a language is extremely uh, intro, uh, well introduced in, uh, in Africa. Now, I was talking about the evolution. The evolution is the process of life. Everything evolutes. The day evolutes and the night evolutes. The hours of the day and night, the flowers, the evolution is part of our life. This is why we have to try to always get in touch with this uh, evolution. And the evolution is dynamic. It's not passive. And when I'm 74, I started in the watch business 50 years ago. And in 50 years, I tell you, I have seen in the industry of watches, extreme powerful, extreme severe changes. And the, the, the brands that have been able to, to succeed are brands that had the flexibility to adapt. And the flexibility to adapt is something that is rare, quite rare. Many people don't have the faculty to adapt. They have the faculty to learn something and then to stay on it. But you can never uh, stay on something you have learned. You have to double check and every day, uh, or let's say every, every year, the, the, your theories are changing. Now, <clears throat> I developed at Omega <clears throat> at a certain moment when I was uh, president of the, uh, of the brand. I was on the board of the brand and I was the driving force of the brand with my people, of course. I was never alone. I always had people. And at a certain moment, 1992, uh, uh, 1992 exactly, um, we said at Omega, Let's make some marketing. Let's make some event marketing to, 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 to be in an event in order to have a, a, a commercial approach with our brand. And a young lady <clears throat> coming from Philip Morris said to me, she was 22 or 23, Mr. Beaver, we should go into the film of James Bond. He said, what? She said, yeah. Golden Eye is the future James Bond film. After 10 years, the film had disappeared because the Broccoli family, they had a fight for the rights. I said, yeah, but... Uh, James Bond is for my generation. It's for Ursula Andres, when she was in a wonderful bikini coming out of the blue sea with the palm trees, and she was blonde, long hair. Oh, we went to the movie just for her, not for Mr. Bond. <laughs> so I said, are you crazy? We, I want to seduce the next generation, not my generation. I want to seduce the young people that are 16 years old, 20 years old. 
but not old guys like me that are already 45. She said, uh, you make a mistake. It, there will be, it will be for young, it will be for the young people too. And it will be very successful uh, among the people between 14 and, tw and 20 years old. I said, okay, I will believe you. Because at a certain moment in business, you cannot double check everything by your own. You must have a belief in people. And that is the difference between good and bad people. The good people are the ones <laughs> that you trusted and they perform. The bad ones are the ones you trusted and they didn't perform. So I said, okay, Madame Barbacci, let's, let's, let's try. Go ahead and let me know how much money they want. She came back and she said, listen, for the money it will be between 10 and 15 thousand dollars to have the watch in the film, which, is, which was in, the, in those days more, uh, the value of the dollar was higher than today, of course, but <laughs> it was still not a lot of money. I said, how come? Yeah, I don't know, no, they, they, they are starting uh, scratch, it's a new film, the price is uh, acceptable. Okay. And Mr. Beaver, if you want, I have to go to LA to meet the people and, uh, from Universal Studios. And if you want, you can come with me. I said, wonderful. And I came to LA and I met the Universal Studio people and we started to discuss prices. And then the, there was a, a lawyer and then they said, $15,000, that's the price. And I said, but that's too cheap. <laughs> I want to pay much more. And they looked at me and they said, why are you doing such stupid jokes? <laughs> I said, it's not a joke, it's a strategy. <laughs> That's even worse, <laughs> they replied. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I said, no, because I just developed at home a little booklet, 15 or 18 pages, <laughs> that is telling us why one and one is not two. One and one must be three all the time. Only in the bookkeeping, one and one should be two. <laughs> and in the budget, and when it is about money. But for the rest, in marketing, one and one must be three. And then they said, you know, we, <laughs> we have an impression of Swiss people that is not the best because we had all these troubles with the stolen gold by the Nazi, in the last <laughs> World War, and that is stocked in Switzerland, and you took advantage. I said, listen, I'm not Swiss. <laughs> you should be Swiss when it's useful. <laughs> Thanks God, I have double nationality. <laughs> I am also from Luxembourg, <laughs> um, which is also not probably for certain tax reasons, uh, not the best. <laughs> The, the country that everybody loves. Uh, <laughs> by consumer, it is loved because the consumer wants to pay very little taxes, but uh, <laughs> the tax people, they don't look the same way to <laughs> Luxembourg than we. So I said, no, why are you saying this? She, she said, because it's impossible what you are telling us. Let's, let's forget this meeting. I said, no, I want to pay one million. I swear this is true. I want to pay one million, not 15,000. And she said, but how can you explain that? I said, because one and one must make three. In other words, 10,000, that's what you give me, 10,000, that's what I give you. And I add one million, and that must make 14 million. 
And then she said, you have to explain. <laughs> I said, yes, easy. If for one million you put on the wrist of uh, Mr. Bond, if you put the watch on the wrist, and do you know, and probably you know it, since first day that the film uh, uh, industry took over the book of Jan Fleming about Bond, James Bond always had a Rolex watch on the wrist. Always. And even if you read the book, they talk, they say, my Rolex. And, and nobody in the world knew it. Because only the few that look really with their eyes and they recognize the watch, they could know it's a Rolex. Because Rolex never considered one and one. And I said, I, Omega, I want to do the contrary. I want to pay 15 million to have the right to put the watch on the wrist. But I put another million <clears throat> to let people know to have the reaction that while they are in the film, suddenly they say, ah, that's the Rolex watch, wow. And in order to do that, we need money. And I will do it, and indirectly, the money will flow also to you. So we should eventually share. You pay your part and I pay your part, but we must put at least one, two, or three million in the market in order to tell everybody, hey, when you go and see the film, don't forget to look at the watch. The guy has an incredible watch. It would be, a, it would be the best present for your boyfriend. Or it would be the best present for your, your, your husband or whatever. Wow, and they said, but you are ready to pay so much. I said, that's not a lot. It's only a lot if the result we get out of it <laughs> is zero. But we will get out of this a very important numbers of sales and of an incredible reputation for our brand. And we made a contract and we had several rights. The first right I didn't have to negotiate, I, I was giving one million, so I could choose <laughs> the different rights I would like to have. I said I want the right to have Piers Brosnan, who was the actor playing Bond, I want his face, you have a few pictures, <clears throat> I want the right to take one of these pictures and to make ads out of it. And I want also the right <clears throat> of to take 10, 20, and 30 seconds from the original movie and to do a 10 second concentration with the original pictures of the movie to have a 15 second, a 30 second, a 45 second for TV or for cinema. And last but not least, I want when you launch the film in the world, to be together with you. I want to be there. You must always have an Omega guy doing all the conferences with you. They agreed. The time was going on at my group, Swatch Group. They had a lot of discussions about the rights. This time went on and the contract was still not signed. And suddenly, the, uh, the, movie, <clears throat> the movie said, listen, um, we need the watch because they will be filming, we will be filming starting in, 15, in two weeks and we need the watch. So <clears throat> we had no watch <laughs> because we were fighting in paperwork uh, in administrative, loyal work. Uh, so we forgot the watch. <laughs> so we said, let's take a watch from the collection that looks like a James Bond watch. 
<coughs> it was a watch with the crown on the reverse side. Not the crown on the right side, but the crown on the left side. Okay, maybe that's enough. So that's all we have. We took that watch, we sent it to uh, LA, and they did the whole movie with this watch. Now, what came out is that watch we produced 2,500 watches like that, retailing 2,000 Swiss francs. So it was not the best seller, but we knew it. But that's, we had no other choice, because people said to me, why did you take this watch? It's not such a big success. I said, but I had no other choice. I couldn't show a normal watch. It, it, the watch had to look a little bit special. And because of the crowd on the, on the wrong side, it is special. <clears throat> what was the result once we had made our ads, advertising, once we had our conferences, once we had promotion, once, once we had, with Piers Brosnan, we did a tour, we went to Hong Kong, we went to Tokyo, we went even to Moscow. Uh, and what was the result? At, after one year, we had sold 45,000 watches instead of 2,000 something. So it was a huge success, phenomenal success. 50,000 watches at an average of 2,000 Swiss francs. It's huge. And why did we have this success? It's because we were able to think one plus X can be huge. And what is the additional element? The additional element was the promotion of the film. To tell people, don't go to the cinema if you are not able to look at the watch the guy is wearing. And at the, uh, uh, once the film is finished, we will ask you. <laughs> and then everybody is looking at ah, the watch, the watch. Which watch is it? Which watch? What is the name? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that's a little exaggeration. So, <laughs> so, from that day on, I knew that you always, whatever you do in marketing, you have to add. This is why when somebody tells you it's only one million, or it's only 100,000, or it's only 10,000, you have to say no, because you always have to add your, your promotion, uh, your marketing uh, uh, expenditures, because you cannot just take. And why did Rolex differently? Because they didn't have the same needs, number one. They, are, they have, in those days, they were already a very strong brand. But number two, <coughs> They didn't have the necessity to e explode, to, a, to have this investment, because they thought that once you are in the film, people will see you. But how can people see a small watch in a film? Eventually, they can see if it's a big, uh, but even then, it's difficult to recognize, oh, that's uh, the watch so and so. With cars, it's more easy. Aston Martin immediately is recognizable. Uh, but uh, the champagne is already more difficult to recognize. The best thing you can recognize was the car. This is why the car have started in 1990 to invest so heavily in James Bond, Aston Martin, and, and, and the Ferrari, uh, and then later Range Rover, etc. Because they have the, con the immediate visibility. But if you don't have the, the immediate visibility, you have to add money in order to make people know what they should remember and what, at what they should look at. Where should their attention go? 
And that is, the, from that day on, we wrote this little booklet, <clears throat> and we had the one and one is three philosophy. In whatever we were doing, we always thought, how much do I have to add to the expenditure <clears throat> in order to do the promotion? And that is quite astonishing. How come you have to add money to a promotion? The promotion should be enough. No, you have to add money to promote. Even you have to promote the promotion. The promotion is always essential. And this is our, that is what I learned with James Bond. And believe it or not, I'm no more at Omega, but Omega is still with James Bond. So it's a story that started in 1992, and in 2022, they're still together. And which is clever from Omega, because in marketing, you need constancy. You need to repeat always the same. And a, a campaign that, doesn't la that lasts less than five years is wasted money very often. You should at least be capable to maintain the program during five years, eventually 10. In 1994, <clears throat> because Omega, James Bond, and Pierce Brosnan is very masculine, and we also need to sell watches to women. And we took Cindy Crawford. And I said to Cindy Crawford, I said, Cindy, if you come with us, I'm going to promote you, and I will, do your pen I will bring you your pension. After you are 30 years old, you will go on with us, and I want to do a contract for 20 years. And Cindy is still on board of Omega today, in 2022, and she came in 1992. So this is a, you have a calculator, this is something like 30 or 40 years that we have been with Cindy. We must present her with Omega in an intellectual, more or less intellectual way, and in, in a professional way. And we should get rid of the beauty, because the beauty is there anyhow, you cannot take it away. So, but we should not emphasize on beauty. And we should never put her too much makeup to have her in the most natural way. And so we promoted her. But on top of this, I said we must give her a reason why she's at Omega. We should not just take a stop model as, as well as we could do the promotion. We must give a reason why is she at Omega. And what is her role? And we invented the role. She is now designer of ladies' watches. Because we took the best a person, the best woman capable to control, to supervise the design of watches made for women. And we went, I don't know, I think two times around the world two times around the world, 10, 20 countries every year, to pr and conferences where she was the spokesperson. And I came on stage and I said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to, to welcome Omega and myself, and in a few minutes you will welcome Cindy Crawford, who came with me because she wants, she's the best person to tell you why she is linked to Omega. Whoa, and then it was, we won already because all the men were looking, ah. Uh, <laughs> and in, in India, in China, she received uh, a lot of jewelry because people were just coming to the table. I brought present for you, madame. And they gave her uh, presents. Uh, I was not jealous, but nearly. Thanks God, I was a man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so you see, in marketing, wherever, uh, and in life, wherever there are rules, there is always a way. And the, the 
the art is to find <laughs> the best way to go through and, uh, and not necessarily follow the rules. This is also why marketing people are a little bit special, because they are disrupted. And disruption makes the difference. The disruption is a kind of creativity, because the disruption kills what is normal, what is usual, in order to present something with creativity, with, with differences. And the disruption is what I'm now looking for my people. I want disrupted people. I want to work with disruption in every field, not only in marketing, but also in product. Even in finance, you need disruption. Always thinking like at school or thinking like at the university, everybody can do. But thinking differently, that is a question of, of your own knowledge on your own uh, personality. Okay, I look at uh, my time, yeah. at my Omega watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not wearing an Omega. I'm wearing a wonderful watch that I love. Maybe you can hear the watch, listen. Timing watch. That's the watch for the nightclub. <laughs> I'm going tonight. <laughs> no, this is a, a very, very fine, fine watch. <clears throat> because I'm also a watch collector. And maybe the last thing I can tell you, <clears throat> I went to the watch industry 50 years ago. I had my first job at AP Audemars Piguet, where I stayed six years, and then I moved to Omega. And I went to the watch industry just because I had a passion. And passion has driven my life. And I hated what you are doing, your school. <laughs> um, I hated it probably as much as you do. Um, and I said, the only way to get out of this hate is to study in something where I have a passion. And where can I have a passion? And I had a friend, he said to me, you know, my father is watchmaker. He can tell you about the passion to make watches. And I went to his friends, um, to my friends, uh, to his father's birthday, and at the birthday of his father, there were a lot of old people and a few young like me and my friend. And he presented me a guy and said, this is the CEO of Audemars Piguet. I said, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what are you doing here? I said, listen, I, I'm a friend of Jacques. And um, I came with him, he invited me. Ah, where are you living? I said, I'm living close to Geneva. Okay, do you have a job? I said, no, not yet. I am finished my studies uh, six months ago. Ah, okay, if you want a job in the watch industry? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> then come to uh, tomorrow, three o'clock, meeting in my house, in my factory. At three o'clock, I went to the factory and <clears throat> He talked to me, he gave me the program, and when I came back home, my wife said, what did he say? Do you have a job? I said, yes, I have a job. Wow! I said, yes, before you shout too loud, I have a job, but no salary. She said, what? No salary? But how will, how will we live? If I would have known that, I would not have married you. Come on, money will come. <laughs> and what did this guy do to me? He said to me, you, are, you have a job in my company, but for one year, no secretary, no office, no traveling, no money, nothing. You just sit 
and listen. I said, where do I sit? You will sit next to each watchmaker. Each watchmaker, you have to sit one week next to him. And to do what? Nothing. You just listen to the soul he is giving birth. I said, the guy is crazy. <laughs> crazy. How can I listen to the soul? He said, because the fingers, the hands of watchmakers, they are fingers of miracle. They create miracles with their hands, with their fingers. Okay. And I started to sit next to watchmakers. But when you sit one week next to somebody that you have never seen, at the end of the week, you know him a little bit. <laughs> uh, and at the end of the week, ah, he, the guy said, ah, if you live here, come and have lunch with me at my family or one evening. Ah, do you play football? I play football. You come with me to the stadium. Ah, do you ski? Yeah, we go ski together. So during one year, I learned to understand, to respect, and to admire watchmakers. And after one year, he said, OK, now you are ready to go to the market. I put you in sales and marketing. And I went around the world, and I understood, and I was passionate, and I talked like a passionate person not like an instructed salesman. And that was the difference. And people liked me because I was normal. And I was like them. I was not the structured salesman. You know? Uh, <laughs> and that was the beginning. And that was 25 years ago. And I'm 74. And I hope that I can stay another 15 years and then I will retire. So I will retire when I'm 90, although you cannot retire from a passion. And that is something I must consider now. You can passion from a job, from a position, from a responsibility. But how can you retire from passion? Only if you die, you retire from your passion. As long as you're alive, the fire of the passion is burning in your blood, in your heart, in your brain, and you cannot retire. So when I say I retire, means I will slow down. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. This is my gift. Ah, Thank wonderful. You, Thank you very much, Antoine. Thank you. It was an honor, honestly. Thank you very much. I will use uh, the we, everything here. We, we don't have the watch to offer. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I was not expecting a watch. I was expecting. This is EPFL. I was expecting sympathy from all of you. Thank you very much. And this booklet is nice. I will put my this notes is, on it. Thank you. It's an honor. And now tonight I will use it with a glass of red wine. Yeah. Ah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> the Friday evening. Whoa. We can start it. <laughs> Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you.